I am Greedy Colain in the CapeCod.com News Center, joined by none other than Dr. Beach himself. Going to be talking more about his top 10 beaches, of which a Cape Cod beach has cleared the top 10 and, in fact, moved up a slot from last year, as far as I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but, Stephen, do you mind just introducing yourself for our listeners? Just kind of give a quick overview of uh, where you're currently working now and what your title is and maybe some of your involvement in the Cape. Okay, well, glad to be with you. Uh, I'm a professor in the Department of Earth and Environment at Florida International University in Miami. But uh, I spent many years working on Cape Cod with pleasure. In fact, I wrote a book about Cape Cod, and actually two books involving Cape Cod uh, during my time there early on, and have come back uh, fairly often to visit because uh, it's such a spectacular area and a very unique landform, one, one of a type in the world, really, in the shape of a bent arm. I've always uh, talked about that and the fact that it was formed by three glaciers. And then, of course, my work is on coastal scientists. I'm a coastal scientist. So I get into the modification of those glacial uh, remains and how it's formed, you know, barrier beaches and, and it caused cliff erosion, which gave the sand to build the barrier beaches like Nasa Spit and Cape Coast Guard Beach, which I, is one of my top beaches and in the top 10 list. list. So maybe that leads us into the list. I suppose, you know, when I was younger, I went down, I grew up in East Ham. We were actually just talking off microphone before this started. Um, I went down and saw the movies that they play at the National Seashore about, like, how Cape Cod was formed. And for the longest time, I thought that was how all beaches were formed because I was but a wee little lad. And I thought all glaciers were required in order to have beaches for some reason. Um, but at any rate, <laughs> uh, so you've, you've given us the top 10. So, yeah, East Ham's Coast Guard Beach is number nine on the list. I believe it was 10 last year. So I wanted to ask, what was the change? Did, is Coast Guard a little bit more appealing now or did one of the other beaches uh, do poorly? And, and we just simply lucked out in that regard. Um, what's, what's so good about Coast Guard Beach well, to even make the top 10? Well, well, first of all, Coast Guard Beach is really uh, just a phenomenal place. I mean, you see it, you approach, you see the old, the old white the lifeguard station on the hill there, and it sets the, sand, the setting, and then you, this is where the cliffs meet the barrier beaches, and there you see the whole uh, Nasa system, the marsh system, which goes back in history, you know, way back and first discovered by Champlain in 1605. So there's a rich history there and the Nasa Indians who lived there early on. And so, uh, but in terms of its its qualities, I mean, obviously it's a beautiful beach, a beautiful setting. Uh, they have lifeguards and uh, it's always, I mean, it's a, you know, you don't stay in the water. I didn't ever stay in the water long, but when I was there in the summertime, I went swimming every day. So people say, you can't swim me. Yeah, okay, so it's a high 60s temperature. It's very refreshing. You don't stay in for an hour, but, uh, uh, a uh, good hot summer day. It's 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 great. I remember, uh, and I also worked further down now to Spit, which is also a little less. It's not got the good access there, but uh, people from Chatham come across on boats and come across there in little boats to cause uh, uh, to to to, to uh, get to there. But yeah, so it used to be you could park there in the early days when I was there. But the big north nor'easter in 1978 destroyed the bathhouses and parking lot. So now. Uh, what I usually like to do is go to the visitor center, the Salt Pond Visitor Center, and then take a bicycle trip down. And that's a good way to get there. But they do have parking, and they have shuttle buses that will take you right to uh, Coast Guard Beach. So there's, there's good access. So it's a splendid beach. I mean, there are other good beaches up along the coast, farther north. But this is particularly good. They've got great lifeguards. Now, the only, the only thing I have to give them detraction on is the fact that there are great white sharks around sometimes. That there has that's been a new a seal. It's because the seal population is so expanded, which used to be all just on Monmouth Island. We used to, have to go there and see the seals. Now you can see the seals on, you know, farther up on the famous beaches like Coast Guard Beach and farther north. Um, uh, but uh, it is a problem because that means the uh, great white sharks follow the, the seals. That's their number one food supply, and so the lifeguards do a great job. In fact, their their flag, their red. And they have a shark on their flag. <laughs> I'll let you know if the sharks are around, and they're they're always watching them for you. So I do recommend that people you know, swim at a, at a lifeguarded beach, where the lifeguards are looking out for your safety. I know it's attempting to go other places where there's no nobody there, but I think it's best these days. And and I hope they can f figure out what to do about the shark situation and the seals because it is a problem. 
And by the way, the same problem has crept into uh, San Diego area. One of my favorite beaches was Children's Beach in La Jolla in San Diego. And Children's Beach is one of the few beaches which was not exposed directly to the big crashing waves of the Pacific Ocean and very safe. That's the reason they named Children's Beach, because children could go there and swim. But it's been taken over by the seals and sea lions uh, because their populations expanded, exploded because of the Marine Mammals Act, okay, which I think has had an unintended consequence. It was really set up to save whales and, and dolphins, but it, it did all marine animals. And don't think I don't like seals and, and sea lions, but when their numbers get so extensive as they are now, same thing. Now you got the great white sharks there too, and and so the only beach that was really Swimmable or safe for children is now occupied by sea lions and, and uh, seals. And also, they used to swim from there across to the Scripps Institution Oceanography Laboratory, which is a counterpart of Woods Hole, okay, Oceanographic Institution. There's the two main oceanographic institutions in this country, maybe the world. But they can't do the, the offshore swim because there's too many great white sharks out there and too dangerous. So everything's been changed there. And here, I know people are as fishermen upset about, you know, less less fish to fish, and and that's been a tradition for people who grew up on Cape Cod. I'm not a Cape Codder; I didn't grow up there, but I got to know a lot of them. Went out fishing quite a bit with them, and so with, with pleasure, some on the beach, but also offshore, uh, uh, in uh, Nantucket Sound, and other places. So I know how I know the kind of traditions of of Cape Codders, and you're one of them, that are there. And so we, we had this balancing act between nature and human, you know, desires and needs. So I hope that can all work out because, you know, if the sharks became worse, then I would have to knock Cape Cod off the list. I hope that never happens. That is Coast Guard Beach off the list. That would be a brutal day at some point, Stephen, to see Coast Guard get off the beach. I think it's been on there for almost, like almost every year that you've been doing it. How long have you been doing the beaches, uh, the, the top 10 beaches? I've been doing it since 1990, 1991, and it's been there for many years. So I don't know exactly when I, when I got on there, but it's always been one of my favorite beaches and having grown up in the Cape, but it deserves to be there. It's, it's a spectacular place. Mm. It uh, really is. Yeah, obviously I am biased as an East Ham born and raised native, so obviously I love Coast Guard Beach. You are revealing all of the secrets that we have for how to access it without go, going down to the National Seashore and then biking down. was the uh, That's the local secret of how to access Coast Guard Beach. Now you've revealed it all. <laughs> um, but it is interesting. So, yeah, I mean, that's the right. sharks. You, the you sharks. Stop by, stop by Doan Rock on the way. You stop by Doan Rock on the way there and, that's that glacial remnant. That's something else to see, too, if people realize. That's one of the things that made people kind of figure out, how did Cape Cod get here? How did that big rock get here, right? And yeah. it took people a long time to figure out that it had to be glaciers that formed Cape Cod originally. Yeah, it's such a unique thing. I lo- we're going to do, hopefully we'll do a follow-up with you at some point, Dr. Leatherman, to talk a little bit more about, like, Cape history and some of the ways it's been formed. Um, uh, but I guess for right now, I did want to ask more about the sharks as well. At some point, do you see your list maybe incorporating the sharks as, like, a feature? Like, oh, you can see such interesting wildlife, and this is a, a unique thing that's something that you can only see at Coast Guard? Is that maybe just, like, a, a way of, like, do you think perception has to do with, like, how the white sharks interact with your list and how it makes it attractive in the first place for a beach? Well, that's kind of interesting because most people say, why aren't sharks one of your 50 criteria? The reason I don't put them in there is because there's so few people die of sharks. Yeah. I mean, shark attacks are very rare if you think about it. And so I didn't even put it as one of the 50 criteria. You're looking at and sort of a, a curiosity or, a, a, you know, <laughs> a, a shark watching type phenomena as a, as a, a positive. Uh, of course, you have to remember my beach is for swimming uh, beaches. So I encourage people to go swimming. Not, I mean, of course, this means that you know, the beaches farther north are just too cold with that Labrador current to make the list. Although I have been swimming in Papanesset Beach in Maine one time. But, uh, oh, by the way, one of the best places to swim for warm water is Brewster Tidal Flats. Oh, you yes. Know this. The other local you know, you secret. Go out in the summertime, you, you pick the tidal time, and it warms up the, the sand. And as the water comes in, it's in, it's in the 80s. When that water comes, comes over that hot sand, warm sand, it warms up to over 80 degrees. 
Mm-hmm. But you have to, you know, know something about all this. You gotta. Honestly. These are all the. This is this is the the straight dope, the skinny that you can only get from people who have been uh, people like Stephen, <laughs> who's been plugged in for decades to the local to the local system. Um, but I'm afraid that's about all the time that we have for this conversation. I'm afraid. But uh, Doctor, is there anything else you wanted to add for this conversation? Will I still have you? Some of the things that you're looking forward to this summer yourself. Well, uh, I do a lot of traveling, see a lot of beaches, and so I will continue to do that uh, through my ratings. And uh, the thing is, people say, oh, do you get paid doing this? I say, no, I don't get paid. I just enjoy doing it. And I, I've been to all the beaches in the United States. I was paid by the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, actually Department of Interior to do that for other reasons, not to rate beaches. But that's the reason I'm able to do this is uh, ratings is because I've seen all the beaches and traveled there, took thousands of photographs and maps and I got to know it very well, so that's what set me up to do this, and then uh, and this whole moniker Dr. Beach took off, and uh, at any rate, so that's how it all kind of got started, and but Cape Cod's one of his favorite areas of my of my uh, history of, of traveling around and living in different areas, and certainly like to go back and visit uh, visit there. That would be awesome, Stephen. If you're ever in person, we'd love to have you in the studio. And I actually, I want to go get some sand from various beaches of Cape Cod and see if I can have you guess which jar of sand is from which beach or some other nature. Uh, give, give a real test of your knowledge. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. It has been a pleasure. My, my pleasure, too. Bye-bye.